Uh, Mickey Moore. <laughs> Mickey is a brilliantly funny, innovative, and multifaceted business maven. Leading a very unique and colorful life, she currently manages the operational oversight for two very successful companies. So I know Nikki's going to be openly hot person tonight. Um, Just Jokes USA and Just Digital Solutions while working as an actress, stand-up comedian, radio personality, and live show promoter. In January 2022, Nikki left her post as president of a luxury affordable housing management firm to launch an interview series called Cracking the CEO Code. Yes. <laughs> wherein she will spend the next 12 months conducting 100 interviews of dynamic leaders of all types. And she is a magnificent human being and an amazing woman. Welcome to the stage, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dogs and cats, Nikki Mo! Y'all better appreciate this. Straight game pay. I love money, that's all I gotta say. You say fuck up, I say hey. Nigga call back, I'm made for the game. Woo! Thank you, baby. Thank you, Courtney. Is my mic on? Is this thing live? Yeah. Okay. I'm a loud girl anyway. I'm hot, y'all, because I'm a big girl too. Woo! Jesus. Give it up for Annie Apple and the Heal Her Network. Don't come up here with that goddamn body. Sit your ass down somewhere, OK? Don't make me feel bad about my goddamn life. What's up, y'all? Listen, can we give it up for Jasmine Saunders? This is her. This is her. Like, she's a new comic. This is fucking everything for a new comedian. And I want y'all to laugh, because are y'all drinking? Because this shit funny as shit if you're drunk. OK? I mean, other than having sex with my ex, I haven't actually performed comedy since March 2020. So I'm not sure how this is going to end. But you know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> Listen, we wasn't together then. And it was COVID. So. Listen, I have to say, I am so pleased to be here. I'm so proud of my girlfriend and one of my favorite humans, Annie Apple. And I am so into what she's, what she's doing here with this cause. Heal Her is everything. I don't know why all you motherfuckers sat in the back, though. What is going on with that? It's a whole fucking row of empty seats. Did you think we were going to gang rape you? I can't see nobody because of the goddamn interrogation lights. I don't even know who to fuck with in this room tonight. But you kind of cute. Hey, you little happy. <laughs> Second row, motherfucker. You chilling with that fuck. I'm just playing, boo. I'm just playing. I'm just playing, but you all cute as shit. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Listen, no, but in your defense, you cute too, baby. <laughs> I'm an equal opportunity, OK? I'm just saying, it's a little early. I do get a little bisexual after midnight, though. <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> so I just want y'all to know I went through something to get here tonight. And I went through something to get my look together. I'm a woman of a particular age. I know you can't tell it to look at me, boo-boo. <laughs> but I am. and. I got these lashes, right? I got my eyelashes, my face beat. How's the beat? It's cute? It's cute or whatever? So I got this done. I got this done for you. <laughs> I got this done, and I got these eyelashes and shit. But the eyelashes made me feel self-conscious because I'm a natural bitch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Other than the bleach, I don't be doing all of that. But I just want to ask you a question because you look like you into me. <laughs> oh, what, you not? <laughs> OK, you too, baby. <laughs> Listen, do these lashes make my ass look big? Because <laughs> that's how I felt. That's how I felt when I was getting dressed. I was like, these eyelashes are going to fuck up my whole thing tonight. <laughs> if, if 
I were not a gentleman, I would say what eyelashes. <laughs> My, my man. Thank you. Good comeback. Thank you. I love it. I live in D.C. Howard University. Okay. All right. All right. Go Howard. I went to UDC because we was poor. But I'm here for a good Howard homecoming or something. You know what I'm saying? But... I came here, and coming to the West Coast, I felt a little anxiety, you know what I mean? Because everybody's so pulled and tucked and all the things, and all my shit is natural. I haven't had a tummy tuck. I got ass, a food pot, titties, all the things, right? And sometimes they don't work in unison. <laughs> you know what I mean? They be doing individual shit and not cooperatively. They just do what the fuck they do. So... What happens is, I've developed an allergy. Does anybody else have allergies? You do? So you know what I mean, right? I'm allergic to skinny bitches. <laughs> and these motherfuckers are everywhere on the West Coast. You know what I mean? I, I was so nervous getting off the fucking plane. I'm like, oh my God. Skinny bitches riding past me on fucking bicycles. What the fuck is happening in the world? This shit is coming to a fucking whole bike country. With these perfect skinny bitch asses. <laughs> bitch, it's snow on the ground. Where are you going? Why do you have on fucking bike pants? <laughs> Running up a perfectly good working escalator? What the fuck is that about? <laughs> Excuse me. Then they want you to feel bad about your life. No, bitch, I'm not moving. <laughs> We're riding to the top. <laughs> this escalator works. We're going to take this ride. Hopping up out of seats without using their hands and shit. <laughs> you ain't gotta show off, bitch. Just saying. God damn it. Don't make me feel bad because I enjoy the luxuries of the conveniences of life. Fucking escalator was made for a reason. <laughs> Nevertheless, the thing that I thought most about though with this cause, Annie is I recently discovered I'm in a same-sex marriage. Dang. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm not a lesbian. My husband's a bitch. Oh. <laughs> Imagine my surprise. Two bitches showing up to everything. <laughs> Me and my plus one, the husband. I first discovered it, though, when he started doing all sorts of bitch things. You know what I mean? Stalking, cyber stalking, no less. Facebook, like this was before I discovered that you could hide your friends from people. So this motherfucker would go on and every man that I would like or say anything to, he starts attacking. He would stalk me, he would follow me. It was crazy. It was the craziest shit, you understand? So he or her became a thing <laughs> that was so necessary for my life. I'm like, anybody who knows me knows that I don't want to drive anywhere. I hate driving. This motherfucker's following me. I got so mad. Not for the obvious reasons. I'm like, motherfucker, if you was going to follow me, you could have drove. <laughs> what the fuck? You made me drive all this fucking way? <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> I mean, then he started doing all kinds of weird shit. I think he just fucking lost his mind. And that's what good pussy will do. Yeah. <laughs> like, if, if your last relationship ended and you didn't have to get a restraining order, your pussy is trash. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That's my perspective, okay? This motherfucker risked life, limb, his job, everything, okay? I'm so proud. <laughs> Listen. But he would do all kinds of crazy shit that didn't make sense. I mean, he would stalk people. Like, if you were my friend on Facebook, you would get attacked. Wow. Totally. I mean, it wasn't even a logical attack. It was like, you a clown molester. What the fuck is that? <laughs> and then he would end the attack in scripture. 
Not no real scripture though. Shit ain't in nobody's Bible but his. Okay? Turn your books with me to chapter 12, verse 9 in the book of Flavor Flav. I'm like, motherfucker, public enemy wrote your Bible? No wonder you fucked up. This guy was the epitome. He was like the perfect specimen he is of a man. 6'3", chisel, 250 pounds. Let me on, big girl. <laughs> Little nigga can't help me. <laughs> but when I'm telling you this guy would do the dumbest shit, I knew I had to divorce him. This motherfucker was 6'3", hiding behind a bush that was four foot nine. I'm like, he's stupid. There's no coming back from that. I mean, it's one thing to be a stalker and a crazy motherfucker, but you're going to be a dumbass stalker? I'm not going for that. I can't. I can't sit down for that. It was ridiculous. It was just so dumb. I, I came home one day. He would, he would come. You know, we, we separated. He would follow me. He would come to the back of the house, the front of the house, sit on the corner, but the motherfucker would be in his own car. Like, motherfucker, you know I know the car, right? <laughs> and I can see you. The bush is too short. He called me one afternoon. I'm coming home, I seen him, I snuck in the back, because <laughs> I didn't want to be bothered. I snuck in the back, and he calls me, says, honey, he even called me honey after we separated, because, you know, we praying the word. <laughs> He said, honey, there's a man on your porch. I said, what? There's a man on your porch. He was peeping in the window. He was walking up and down the porch. I said, so what did you do? He said, I ain't do nothing. What the fuck? Why wouldn't you do anything? Your wife lives there alone because you're not there anymore. And why wouldn't you do anything? Did you call the police? He said, no. So I called the police. I said, let me, let me call you back. I'm going to call the police. So I hung up, called him right back. The police told me to describe the suspect. What are you wearing? <laughs> Dumbass. Get the fuck out of here. Anyway, I'm just so excited to be here tonight. I am. And I love everything about Annie Apple. Heal her and all the things. And I appreciate all of you for showing up. And I want you to drink a lot of liquor and donate a lot of fucking money to this cause. Okay? So this is what we do. My name is Nikki Moore. Follow me on every fucking thing. N-I-K-I-M-O-O-R-E funny. Okay? Hallelujah, holla back. Thank you. And you know, Nikki is so humble. She didn't tell you guys, but she's volunteered to breastfeed all the kids in my village. Thank you.